All right, y'all, let me show you what I'm going to try to do today and how I'm going to try to find these fish. As you can see, this point on the map over here, how it sticks out uh, up in there. I've made a pass or two over it. You can see how the bass and the bait fish are relating to this hump, or the point, I guess you'd call it. They're hanging right off the little brake line right there, right on the top a little bit, right off of this side on the brake line where the bass are. The top part of this thing doesn't have any, any fish on it to speak of. They're all hanging on the edges. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to position my boat right off the edge of this thing. And I'm going to try to cast. What I'm going to try to do is to try to cast parallel to these little uh, contour lines right here. And try to keep that bait in the strike zone as much as possible. And we'll see if we can't catch us a few. The fish are hanging right there on that edge, right where it breaks off. I'm going to get upwind a little bit and I'm going to throw downwind right here in those fish that are hanging that are hanging right there on that edge. All right, I got a little, a four inch little watermelon stick worm here. And I'm going to, let's see, I'm gonna pull off about right there, which would be about an inch and a quarter, something like that maybe. So that it's not as long. And I've got a, I think this is a number six Ned rig set up I don't know it looks to me like it's a quarter ounce I'm gonna thread this rascal on there as straight as I can get it push it up on there there you go now it's as straight as I straight as I can get it and we're gonna see what happens and I'm gonna apologize right now because the darn winds blowing it's supposed to be like five mile an hour and it's about 15 or 20 so show you what I got here this is just a medium action seven foot medium rod it's actually one of my crappie rods and I've got 10 pound high vis it's white braid on here I've got a uh, 14 pound fluorocarbon leader tied with a uh, oh shoot I can't even remember the darn name of that knot Albright knot I think is what it's called and that's what we're gonna see see if we can get them I'm sitting in 28 feet I'm gonna make some casts back here I'm gonna get down wind here and set in the back of the boat since the winds blowing so bad I can't face into it and you guys be able to hear me what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I, I marked them fish like right out this way I'm gonna throw that Ned rig out there it's gonna be about 20 25 well, let's say 20 to 22 foot of water is what I'm going to be fishing in. So I'm going to let the line out. I'm going to let it go all the way to the bottom. And that's going to be kind of difficult with this wind. But I'm going to see if it'll work. I'm going to hop that thing once I get it down to the bottom too. Let's see here. Okay, I've reached the bottom. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to tighten my line up. And I'm going to hop this bait. Jig it up and down. Hop it and just let it fall back to the bottom. I'm gonna watch my line as it's falling back to the bottom too because those fish will grab it as it's falling back and with this wind blowing, you may not feel it, but you'll see that line tick. Especially that's with that with that high vis braid like that, it's a whole lot e easier to see when you get a bite. I'll have to make fan cast right here since I didn't throw my marker out exactly where the fish were I'll do some fan casting out here to find try to figure out where they are and I may have to back up just a little bit I may be too far out now right out there I watch that line too when it's falling a lot of times I'll catch them on the way down when that baits on its way down I'll catch them them bass will bite it before it even hits the bottom so I'm always trying to watch that line I hit the bottom I thought I had a bite already these fish will be in tight groups sometimes. So if you can just find that school and know exactly where to cast, it sure makes it a whole lot easier and you can really catch them fast. Oh, there's one right there. Look at that, second cast. Second cast. He doesn't feel like he's very big. Coming at me now. Little bitty guy. I'll be dang, it's a crappie. <laughs> I come out here to catch bass and the dang crappies won't leave me alone. You believe that? That's sorry, son of a gun. 
If I was out here trying to catch crappie, I wouldn't get one. We'll start out. Any kind of fish is a good fish right now. We'll let him go. Those crappie and bass and white bass, they'll all hang together in the same place. So we'll get back out there. The second cast, that ain't bad. There's one right there. Look at there. That looks like a good one right there. My fourth cast. Here he comes. Oh, he's pulling. What is that? There he is. That's a good spotted bass right there. Strong rascal. And yeah, golly, he ate that that gum. He ate that Ned Rig, man. I mean, it's gone. Hey, be still. I'll get you off. Look at how far that Ned Rig's down in his mouth right there. Nice little spotted bass. I love catching these spotted bass, man. They are so fun. Such a beautiful bass. He ate that watermelon Ned Rig. There's one. We've been fishing about five minutes. One bass and one crappie. See if we can't get us another one out there. Fishing it fairly aggressive, you know. I'm not just dragging it on the bottom. Sometimes they'll bite it just dragging it slow. But I'm, I'm hopping it thinking that it's mimicking a shad that's trying to get away or some sort of minnow you know in these cold months they're feeding on shad out in this open deep water here primarily so I want to try to imitate that oh I thought I saw a bite on my line there, I had one right there he is right there oh he come loose dang I'm gonna let it fall right back to the bottom Sometimes there's several right there in that area where you'll miss one and you let it fall right back to the bottom and you can get them. You can get another one. There he is. <laughs> I told you. He just let it fall right back in there. Oh, he's a little guy, but he's still a bass. A lot of times with these spotted bass especially, you miss one like that, just keep letting it go back down. Don't reel it in because another one will get it. They're following each other sometimes, you know, and they're a group, so you always want to let it go back down before you reel it back up. I kind of got an idea where that school is at on that one, right out that way. I had three bites. Set the hook. Well, I didn't set the hook on the first one. Set the hook, hung the, first, hung the second one, and lost him. Let the line back just fall back down and catch that next one. Now, like I say, he wasn't very big, but he was fun. There he is. There's, oh, he come loose. Okay, I'm gonna let it go back down. Dang, damn it! That didn't hit it very hard. He just, he just had it. Letting it fall again. Right in the same spot. He didn't get it. Oh, that one did. Look at that. Just let it fall right back in that same place. That's a strong one there. Look at that. Oh! Woo! We got him. He liked to come off. He came off, but we we got him anyway before he got got loose. There's three bass and two crappie in about eight or nine minutes. Look at that. We'll get it back out there again. This is not very difficult to do. Um, you just got to spend a little time on your electronics looking around and uh, recognizing what you what you found what the fish look like and they'll be crappie and largemouth and spotted bass and white bass if you have spotted bass in your lake um, they'll all be together I must not have thrown where that little school was that time Oh, golly, I was looking for my rag, and there one grabbed it. Dag, gum it. Here he comes. Hey, that's another good little spotted bass. Look at there. They love a Ned Rig, as you can see. Not bad at all. January, you can't beat that kind of fishing. Okay. 
get it right back out there again. Like I say, this this point drops off from 20 to about 22, 23 foot of water right here where I'm catching these fish. There's one. Oh, I lost him, boy, right under the boat. That's right on that brake line. I'll just drop it back down there. There he is back. There's another one right under the boat. I just kept working it. He ain't very big, but he, we got him. Just let that thing fall after I missed him, you know. There you come back after. Another good one. Let me go back this way a little bit. Seems like they're... Sometimes when you catch one or two out of a school, you'll move that school and pull it to the boat. And that's kind of what seems like what happened. I caught them first ones right out this way. And when I reeled them in, they followed it. Followed those other fish right underneath me here. I may just drop it down, straight down on this after this cast. Just fish it like a jigging spoon straight under the boat and see what happens. This water temperature's 59 degrees which is pretty warm for us down here this time of year in this part of Texas normally we have 50 to well 47 to 50 52 I'm straight under the boat again I'm gonna hop it up and down right here under the boat that school is still down there look at that hey that's a better one there buddy here he comes here he comes he's gonna jump Oh, golly, that was a big one. Daggummit, and he come off. Shoot. Man, that was a four-pounder right there. Daggummit. I'm going to let it straight back down there again. All right. Oh, another one had it. Golly. I'm just hopping it right straight down under the boat right here. I'm going to hit it that time. He's not near as big as that other one. Daggummit, it, but he's a, we'll take him. Look at that. Just using it like a jigging spoon now. Not a bad one. Look at that. I'm going to drop it right straight down again. Watch that line when it's going down. Alright, it's on the bottom. There's one other one. Look at that. Straight down, another Kentucky. Get down there and get as many as we can while they're fired up, biting like that. I'm watching that line go down. That biggest one I lost was a large mouth. There's another one. Look at that. I mean, it's every drop. These Kentucky bass are thick down there, man. And they're eating that thing, too. Look at that right there. What I was saying is that that biggest one I had was a large mouth. He was about a four pounder, it looked like. I'm not sure if other folks fish this like this, you know, basically like a jigging spoon or not, but I have really busted them doing this. As you can see, I don't think I've ever seen anything about anybody catching them this way. I must have caught all of them out of that group. Or they pull back out that way a little bit. There's another one though. I said that and then I get another one. Decent fish. A nice little spot of bass, quick release. Let's see, get it down in there again. Maybe there's some more active. A lot of times, too, you if the sun's out, when you catch them spotted bass, you'll see three or four with it. Hey, y'all, I want to show you one more thing. Since the invention of live scope, everybody's kind of got away from using the switch fire mode on their electronics because they're just using live scope. But if you don't have live scope, this is a great way to catch them. As you can see, these fish right here, down here on the bottom. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drop my, I got a Ned rig on. My Ned rig's still on right here. I'm going to drop it straight down. 
by my trolling motor so that I can kind of read my signal as it goes down. You see my bait going down right there. Right down to the fish. Fish are on the bottom. Okay, I'm on the bottom. And I'm going to hop this Ned rig up and down off the bottom kind of like a spoon. And you can see all them fish. Oh, I just had one. You can see all them fish right here. They're holding really tight to the bottom. My bait just went in there amongst them. Oh, there he is right there. Little white bass. Boy, he ate that thing too. God, sweet. Anyway, that's the way that works. There's one. He's a strong rascal. Not very big, but he's strong. I got him underneath the jaw. Look at that. He come up there and looking at him, and I got him. Not a bad little fish. Pretty. I'll drop it right back down here again. Let's go out this way somewhere. A little deeper water, giving it kind of sharp, sharp jerks out there. And when we get them to react, we can get the rest of that school to bite as well. There's one right there. He's not very big, but we'll take him. I'm going to get back out there as quick as I can. Right in this area, right out here. There's another one. Hey, that's a better one there. That's a better one. That's a strong one. Pull a little drag out. That may be a drum. Huh? It's just a stronger. Oh, I got him underneath the jaw. Okay. I knew he was stronger. He's still not bad, though. Hey. Another good spotted bass. forceps out here not a bad not a bad spotted bass nice one right there there's another one he's jigging that Ned rig up and down Large mouth. He's not as big as that other one, that large mouth I had, but we'll take him. Not a bad little fish. Let's try out that way right there. See if we can't bring some from out there up closer to us. There's one way out yonder. I'm liable to bring that group this way now. Get them a little closer to us. That ain't bad. Well, y'all, if you hadn't already added the Ned Rig to your bag of tricks, I'd recommend doing it. As you can see, it'll catch them pretty good, even in the wintertime. And jigging it straight up and down, just like a jigging spoon, man, it'll, it'll really catch some fish. And, uh, Appreciate you guys joining me. We'll see you on the next one. Let's get her back.